In this video, I'm going to share with you the exact tips, strategies, and templates that helped me get CLB12 and ace all eight self speaking tasks. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start off with task one, which is about giving advice. You have 30 seconds to prepare and 90 seconds to talk. So let's break it down. So in task one, you will be presented with a scenario where you need to advise someone. It could be a friend, a family member, or a colleague. This question might look something like this. Your friend is planning to move to a new city and is seeking advice. Provide your recommendations. All right, the first tip is to speak directly to that person. Address the person as if they are right in front of you. For example, hey Sara, moving to a new city is exciting, but I have some tips that might help you. Now, my second tip is to make sure you offer at least two or three specific pieces of advice. For example, Firstly, researching neighborhoods for safety and convenience is key. Secondly, it's wise to secure a job before moving. All right, the third tip is to use your imagination and tell a story or example. For example, I remember when I moved to Vancouver and how researching schools helped me find the best place for my family. All right, my next tip is to use proper transitions and organize your thoughts with transitions like firstly, secondly, and finally. It helps the listener to follow along. And my last tip is to use a closing statement because it adds a nice touch. It could be as simple as, I hope these tips make your move smoother. Good luck. Now, if you're looking to level up your self score, my new book has all kinds of tips, templates, and practice questions you need. I'll leave a link down in the description. All right, in test two, you will be asked to talk about a personal experience. The question will be something like, talk about a time when you helped someone. What did you do and how did it feel? Start by clearly setting the scene. Describe the situation briefly to provide content. For example, back in college, I had a roommate who was struggling with his studies and I saw an opportunity to assist. Next, you should share your actions. This is where you detail what you actually did. So don't be afraid to go into specifics. For example, I noticed he was having trouble with math. So we set up weekly sessions where I helped him understand some formulas. So since the task often ask about um, how you feel, make sure to express your feelings. For example, Helping him succeed was not only rewarding, but also a strength our friendship. I felt proud and fulfilled. Tip number four is to make your story more engaging, use descriptive language that creates a picture. For example, I'll never forget the smile on his face when he passed his exam. It was a moment of pure joy and accomplishment. And finally, finish off with a reflective statement about the experience. For example, this experience taught me the value of empathy and the impact small gestures can have. It's something I'll always cherish. Let's dive into task three, which is about describing a scene. First of all, you've got uh, about 30 seconds to prepare and then 60 seconds to talk. You'll be shown a picture and your job is to describe it as vividly as possible. You should start your description by setting the scene. Something like, all right, what we have got here is a busy downtown park. It gives a good initial idea of what the picture is all about. The second tip is to go from the main things to the minor things. So try to prioritize your description. Start with the most noticeable elements and then you can move on to the smaller details. The third tip is to use spatial terms. Phrases like in the background, in the foreground, beside, next to, above, below, and can really make your description pop. So if something significant is located in a particular corner of the image, point it out. Say something like in the top right corner. It helps the listener to visualize the scene. And finally, don't forget to wrap it up. A simple closing like this can really put a bow on your task. You can say something like, so that's a little glimpse into this lively downtown park. Hope that paints a good picture for you. By the way, if you're keen to mastering this task, don't forget to check my new book, Pack with Templates Tips. I'll leave a link down in the description. All right, let's dive into the speaking task four, which is about making predictions. You'll be looking at the same picture you saw in task three in the previous task, 
but this time you're gonna predict what is going to happen next this task tests your ability to use future tenses like will and is going to so keep that in mind also you have 30 seconds to prepare and 60 seconds to talk you can always start things off by saying i think several things are going to happen in the next few minutes this sets the stage for your predictions the next step is to lay out multiple predictions don't just focus on one thing try to aim for at least three or four different predictions for example if you see a picture of a family packing for a camping trip predict something like this the family will probably arrive at the campsite before sunset then they are going to set up the tent all right the next tip is to use future tense a lot so since selfie wants to see if you can handle the future tense drop will and is going to a lot say things like the father will likely start a campfire or the kids are going to explore the nearby stream also give a tiny bit of reasoning for each prediction it can be for example since they are packing a lot of fishing gear i assume they'll spend a good chunk of time by the lake and you have to always wrap up in this case you can wrap up with something like this anyways those were some of my predictions in this scene all right let's get into task five where your job is to compare and persuade you know how you sometimes have to convince your buddies that skiing is way cooler than snowboarding or that mma is the ultimate sport well that's basically the same but just in a more structured way you start off with 60 seconds to decide between the two options for example maybe it's choosing between going on a road trip and going on a flight you have got another 60 seconds to get ready for your speech this is your chance to think about why your choice is better compared to the other option and then it's showtime you have a full 60 seconds to lay down your argument and hopefully make a believer out of your imaginary friend family member or co-worker all right let's talk about this strategy i personally used which was very successful you should start by acknowledging the other option for example you can say something like hey i know you're all about the road trip and that's cool but let me tell you why flying is a game changer next you have to line up at least two or three strong reasons to back your choice like if you like flying you can mention how flying is much quicker or more convenient you should also use comparative words you have to ditch the numbers and get descriptive for example instead of saying my option takes three hours while yours take five hours you should say something like my option is way faster because the examiners are listening to comparative words like easier closer cheaper and so on and you have to close with a conviction you have to finish a strong by summing up your points for example you can say something like so yeah that's why flying will get us um, to the phone way quicker than a road trip i hope you're on board with that all right let's dive into task six which is about dealing with a difficult situation you have got a solid 60 seconds to brainstorm and you have got another 60 seconds to dive in and make the imaginary call to a friend or a family member to explain the situation so you have to begin with basics you have to always start off by a casual greeting something like hi it's ali calling how are you you have to always um, start with a personal touch to set the stage next you have to acknowledge their feelings if they are going through something you have to show empathy for example you can say something like i'm so sorry to hear about um, your tough day it really sucks and i understand next you have to drop the bomb carefully you have to explain why you can't make it to whatever event or situation they are counting on you next you have to offer an alternative say something like i would be thrilled to help you in any way i can just not today or tomorrow how does next weekend sound it shows that you are not bailing completely just uh, postponing your support and finally you have to wrap it up you have to close the call on a positive note for example you can say something like thank you so much for getting where i'm coming from it means a lot 
So if you want to get deeper into these tasks, my new book on the Selfing Speaking has got you covered, including specific examples, templates, and tips. I'll leave a link down in the description. All right, let's dig into task seven, which is about expressing opinions. And it gives you a chance to show how well you can articulate your viewpoints. Just like task one, you have got 30 seconds to collect your thoughts and then 90 seconds to express your opinions. So be straight up with your opinion from the get-go. You have to start with something like this. In my opinion, implementing a four-day work week is a win-win for everyone. Then you have to unpack your opinion. Next, go for details. Bring out two or three solid reasons and support your stance. You can utilize transitions like, first of all, it improves the employee well-being. Secondly, it boosts productivity. So you can use firstly, secondly, and so on. So 90 seconds is a lot. So you can use it tactfully and you can improve your response with a story. It could be real or it could be imaginary. It adds credibility and makes your response more relatable. And finally, you have to close it strong. As you wrap it up, you have to restate your opinion and get it a nice little bow. For example, so those are some of the reasons why I strongly feel that a four day work week is beneficial. All right, task eight is about describing an unusual situation. You get a quick 30 seconds to eyeball this weird picture that Selfweep is going to show you. And then you have got 60 seconds to paint the picture with your words. You have to start with a casual opener, something like this. Hey John, it's Ali. You won't believe what I'm looking at right now in a Stanley Park. Some sentences like this draw the listener into the scene right away. Next, you have to dive into the details. Here is where you go beyond the weird or unusual to really capture what you're seeing. Think about color, um, shapes, maybe actions. Are people involved? Is there something um, funny about the setting? Next, you have to try to describe the picture in a way that touches on multiple senses. For example, you can say something like, it smells like freshly baked cookies, but look like a scene from a sci-fi movie. Next, you have to add a dash of emotion. You have to really feel that how does the scene make you feel and uh, does it make you excited does it make you confused you have to share that too because it adds an extra layer to your description and finally you have to wrap up carefully you have to conclude with something like this so that's the quirky scene i'm looking at right now hopefully i managed to paint a good picture for you so if you want more tips i've got a book that is full of templates and tips to nail the selfie speaking section the link is down in the description all right i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions make sure to go ahead and comment below and i'll try my best to answer all of your questions please like and subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to watch my next video right over here about self -peep. as always thanks for watching and see you in the next video cheers